During this fortnight, to use the word properly and not for a video game title, the results for Vim Jam 2 were released, and I took a well-deserved break down in the Bahamas. And then when I got back, I frantically fixed my game, based on feedback, and made this video. But before we get into that, my name is Helper Wesley, I make games and fortnightly videos. For this Vim Jam, my goal was to get a higher rank than I got last year. Last year I placed 41st place out of 460 something games, which was really good. This year... Yeah, yeah, no I, I didn't... I didn't, uh, yeah. So let's just fix the game, shall we? I went through all the comments on the game and compiled the feedback that I thought was most valid and that I could actually achieve without having to like rework the entire game. If you've seen the previous video of me making the game, you'll understand what happened. Not trying to make an excuse, but I did what I could with all the time that I had. So after making my to-do list of things to fix, and getting back from the Baham... Wait, wait, what's that? Okay, I was lied to. That right there is a freaking maple leaf. I'm not in the Bahamas, I'm still in Canada! Ugh. <laughs> so after getting back from my short trip within my own country, I started tackling my list. And of course I started with all of the easy stuff first. Starting with the fact that your attacks didn't actually go in the direction of the mouse after you've locked yourself into a combo. The spear would point the way of the original attack, but your character would lunge towards the mouse, which obviously wasn't intended. That was just a, a, a fun little thing that happened. <laughs> so this was probably the easiest fix out of everything. All I had to do was slot in rotate spear towards mouse before the attack, and that was it. The next thing, though, was also related to the spear. It was a short and sweet comment about the janky hitbox. And yes, the spear's hitbox was janky as all hell, because when I'd made it, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I really don't. But I made it skinny and long off-center. So even if you had your mouse perfectly on the enemy, the spear could be off a little bit, and you'd miss, which doesn't feel very good. So I went through both the light and heavy attack, and made the hitboxes a little bigger, a little wider, and a little more accurate. Speaking of which, light and heavy were really poor choices for the names of those attacks, because I made them so that one would be the long and skinny attack that you'd use to like get further away enemies, and then the other one would be a slow attack that would hit a bunch of enemies at a time, and knock them back farther. So light and heavy sounded appropriate, but when players read those, they expected the heavy attack to do more damage, when really what it should have been labeled was the swing attack. So one is now the stab, and the other one is now the swing. So players have a better idea of what each one's supposed to do, because watching playthroughs, people would get real upset when they realized that the swing was just a slower attack. So why would they use it? It's funny how little things like that can really throw off the experience. Then my ADHD kicked in, and I kind of got distracted by an extra credits video about Ariana Grande having a concert in Fortnite, which just seems like a really cool idea. Corporate as all hell, but I always love seeing video games become more than just video games. Because I think video games can be something really cool, it's an interactive storytelling medium. And it's just... ah... Anyhow. Tangent over, getting back to it. Another change that no one brought up but I thought was kind of important after watching playthroughs was adding a number of rooms counter, so you know the progress you're making, because without that people were getting demotivated and didn't know how far it was until they were getting to the boss, or getting to the end, or if there even was an end, if they'd skipped the story at the beginning. Which was hefty as all hell, so most people did that. So I added a rooms counter and a blurb at the starting hub that tells you that the boss is in the 13th room. And hopefully that will give people some perspective. And with that done, I decided to do something I didn't want to do to begin with, which was tackle the combat system. I made that day one and two, and I just 
didn't remember how any of it worked, and I don't think I knew how any of it worked back then either. I just threw it all together, and it kind of sort of worked, so I left it alone. But, obviously that's the most important part of a dungeon-crawling, hack-and-slash kind of game. So, the things that were essential that I was missing were iframes and an indicator for when you got hit. Now, there is that. There is actually an indicator for when you get hit. It's a little screen shake that happens, but it's the same screen shake as when you hit an enemy. So it wasn't really a good indicator because you get confused between attacking enemies and getting hit yourself. There was no sound and there was no flashing. There was a short stun animation that was also supposed to be your iframes, but neither of them were big enough or noticeable enough to make an impact. So for iframes, which are invincibility frames, a period of time after getting hit that you can't get hurt, which is kind of important, I added in a timer that just, while that timer is active, you can't take any damage. And then for the noise indicator to tell you that you've been hit, I just stole the grunt sound from the story part and changed the pitch a little bit to make it sound like a distressed grunt. And I've got to say, with the invincibility frames in there and the grunt, it did feel a lot better. Hopefully that will help players enjoy the combat a little more. Because, whew, that rank is lower than I'd hoped. And since everything was kind of working, I didn't want to mess with it. So as much as I wanted to get to the dash cancel, I was kind of reluctant to because that was going to get into the combo system, which I really didn't understand. So I ran off to another major issue, which was the story. I threw all of the dialogue at the beginning, and it was hefty, and people skipped it, and I, I don't think I watched a single person read the whole thing in one go without getting halfway through and being like, okay, bored now. So what I did was break up the story into three chunks and no longer have any of it at the beginning. Instead, I put a warning message there so people will get a, a heads up for what they're in for, because I didn't really change the difficulty of the game at all or any of the starting stats, so it's going to be just as hard as before, the difference being that the combat is going to feel a little nicer. But they're still probably going to die a whole bunch. So I put a warning message there like in Darkest Dungeon. When you boot up Darkest Dungeon, you get this screen that tells you you're going to be in for a rough ride, buckle in. So I put that there just to get people's heads in the right space, and put down the story as three chunks that you can pick up as you play the game. As you reach one of the three different favor rooms, you unlock a new section of the story. And this was an attempt to mimic the way that Hades, the game that this is based off of, does storytelling. When you die, you come back, and there's more story in the base. So dying becomes sort of a joy, because you get something new to like interact with or read or do. And speaking of favor rooms, or favors, I guess, terrible transition. After watching a bunch of people play the game, I didn't see a single person click on this very obvious little card icon hidden away in the corner of the screen. What that's for is you're supposed to click on that and it's going to bring up four blank slots that will be filled in with favors that you're going to use that run. Some people talked about how if they hadn't played Hades, they wouldn't have understood the favor system, so they would have thought those things stacked. But in reality, they, they go away every time you die. And without opening this menu, you'd have no idea. So I needed people to click on that button. And to bring their eyes to that, I decided to put a particle effect there. So when you finish reading the flavor text from the god that you got the power from, it would like light up or shoot something out or do something. It's a bit of a quick and dirty way to do it, but I didn't really give myself a lot of time this week, so that would have to do. And still afraid to tackle the dash cancel for the attack, I added in a save load system. Which thankfully was just four stats. All I had to do was save the strength, vitality, speed, and how much gold you had, and that's it. So now if you have a save file, it shows the load game button on the main menu and you'll just get those stats. <sighs> and look at that, I still have time to try and add that dash cancel. Cancel dash. Attack cancel. Whatever you want to call it. I didn't want to do this because I was really worried that I was going to break the combat system. And it wasn't until after doing this that I realized that I could have just saved the file somewhere else and not have to worry about it. 
but whatever. I worked on one file, I didn't have any extra saves. One day I will learn my lesson. But the dash cancel was suggested by Mighty Jor, and basically what it does is, if you're in the middle of an attack combo, normally you'd be trapped in place there, but now you can dash out of the way, which will cancel your combo and get you out of danger. And after putting it in, oh my, that is exactly what the game needed. A lot of people commented that they didn't use the dash at all, because you couldn't use it in the middle of combat, you'd have to wait until you're done attacking, and by that point, you could just move. But now that you can dash out of an attack combo, it makes the movement feel so much better. So thank you to everybody who commented. I wasn't able to get everything fixed, because time isn't infinite. But I got a lot of the biggest issues fixed, I think. So thank you again to everybody who commented and left feedback. I think as far as videos go, I'm going to spend the next couple of fortnights fixing up the games that I like, and burying the ones that I don't. And if you'd be interested in supporting me in that, check out my Patreon, where you can get perks like having your names at the end of my videos. Anyway, the links to all the places that I hang out are down below, and if you decide to click on one, then I'll see you there.